Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Rex Halleck, and I'm the Senior Product Manager at CUI Devices. Today, I'll be discussing Peltier modules and how they can help you defeat heat in your applications. Before we dive in, let's go through a quick agenda. We'll start off with a technology overview, then we'll look at how to select a Peltier module, we'll take a look at our product offering, and lastly, we'll review some of our additional resources available. All right, let's do a quick overview of Peltier technology. A Peltier module is a thermoelectric cooling device that functions like a heat pump, transferring heat from one side and expunging it to the other, or pulling heat out of one location and moving it to a different location. In the images on the right of this slide, you'll see the construction of a Peltier module. They're packed full of these little thermal couples, which are positive and negative charged semiconductor pellets, which when a current is applied, they react to create heating and or cooling. This cooling and heating is realized on the ceramic plates that hold the semiconductor pellets in place. The bottom image shows a cross section of a Peltier when it is actually in operation. As you can see, heat is pulled out from something on the cold side and released on the other or the hot side. An important note is that Peltiers are a rather unique and high-end cooling solution. Not all applications need them, and certainly not all customers will want to pay the price for a Peltier. But if an application requires more rigorous cooling than traditional methods, such as a DC fan, a Peltier must be used. It is always good to also keep in mind that Peltiers are not replacements to other cooling methods, such as DC fans and heat sinks, and they are certainly not low-cost cooling solutions. As noted in the previous slide, there are situations where Peltiers are going to be needed or required. For example, applications that require precise temperature control, cooling below ambient temps, and immediate temperature response will all benefit from Peltier modules. The benefits of a Peltier include things like precise temperature control, the ability to cool below ambient temperatures, immediate temperature response, there are no fluids or moving parts due to their solid state construction, and low maintenance due to their relative long life, lifetime. But one note regarding lifetime, there is no standard like there is on things like DC fans. This is because Peltiers are truly a product of their environment, meaning that the usage conditions or environment will greatly affect how long the Peltier lasts. So we're gonna jump into some more specific applications shortly, but I wanted to just give you a general idea of where you might find Peltier modules as they are probably a bit hidden in that you won't realize where they're being used. You may find Peltiers in consumer applications that require refrigeration or as acting like heat pumps. You might also find them in scientific or industrial applications such as lab equipment, dehumidifiers, lasers. You might also find Peltier's cooling components in electronic applications that are noise sensitive or something like a fan might be too loud. Let's look at a specific Peltier application that we're probably all familiar with. The industry here would be the medical industry and the application is an ophthalmic laser. The real life situation that we all know would be laser eye surgery, which I'm sure some of us or many of us have had in our lives. The Peltier in this application is used to keep the laser diodes at a steady temperature to obtain a constant emission wavelength. This helps to allow the actual operation to be performed not only accurately, but very quickly. Now that we have a general idea of what a Peltier does and how it functions, let's take a look at how to select a Peltier module for an application. As mentioned earlier, lifetime is a common question when it comes to Peltiers. The good news is that Peltiers in general last a lot longer than something like a DC fan or a blower. However, there are some limitations to Peltiers. In particular, thermal fatigue affects the solder that is normally used to bond the copper to the semiconductor pellets and the sintering that forms the bond between the copper and the ceramic. This is also known as thermal expansion and contraction, or slight variations in the physical size of the pieces of the Peltier module. This can cause small cracks and thus have a negative effect on the performance of the Peltier over time. Of course, we're talking a rather long time here. Last thing on this slide, I'm gonna be referencing a term called thermal cycles over the next few slides. Thermal cycle is just the term used for the cooling cycle of the Peltier, which is bringing the temp from the starting temperature down to the target temperature. For purposes of these slides, we'll use a thermal cycle of 80 degrees starting, cooling down to 20 degrees. As noted in the previous slide, 
Thermal fatigue or stress can cause reduced performance over time in a Peltier module. On the image on the left here, you see the typical structure of a Peltier module. You'll have your two ceramic plates and then a layer of solder, a layer of copper, another layer of solder, and then the semiconductor pellets. Also on the hot side, you have a center layer. On the image on the right, you can see the same cross-section of a Peltier module, but with our innovative architect structure value-added feature. What this is, is a thermally conductive resin layer on the cold side between the copper and the ceramic. This absorbs some of the expansion contraction caused by these large temperature fluctuations, thus reducing the amount of thermal stress on the internal components of a Peltier. And as we know from the previous slide, this thermal stress can cause degradation of performance over time. Well, by adding in the Arctec structure resin layer, we reduce the thermal stress and in turn increase the potential lifetime of the Peltier module. I'd like to touch a little more on the advantages of our Arctec structure, as well as look at some test data to back it up. So in addition to the thermal resin layer we just referenced, we also use high temperature solder rated up to 235 degrees Celsius in our modules. We also use particularly large semiconductor pellets to assist in a very uniform temperature across the surface of the Peltier ceramic, which I'll talk more about in the next slide. The major advantage of our Arctec structure is shown in the graph on the right. This graph shows the number of thermal cycles, which is starting temp down to target temp, over time and the percentage change in thermal resistance. As said earlier, for purposes of this presentation, we're using a thermal cycle of 80 degrees starting temp and bringing it down to 20 degrees target temp, otherwise known as a delta T of 60 degrees Celsius, which we'll talk more about in a few slides. As you can see in the graph, standard Peltier construction without the Arctec features typically will start to see performance degradation as early as 500 cycles and certainly by 3,000 cycles. However, with the Arctec structure factored in here, we see very minimal performance degradation at the same number of cycles. And in fact, we see little performance degradation well beyond up to over 30,000 cycles. This graph alone really helps to highlight the benefit of our Arctec structure. One thing to note, not all CUI devices products have the Arctec structure, and this is for two reasons. The first reason, is that very small Peltiers, generally 15 millimeters or smaller, don't need the Arctec resin layer because the thermal stress or fatigue is rather minimal due to the small number of thermal couples or positive and negative semiconductor pellets. The other reason that not all CUI devices products have Arctec structure is that we wanna offer a range of options. We realize that not all customers need a top shelf solution so we'll cater to those customers' needs as well as those customers that do need top shelf solutions. As we know from the previous slide, another benefit of the Arctec structure is that we use particularly large semiconductor pellets inside of our Peltiers. What this does is create a uniform temperature across the surface of the Peltier module. As you can see in these images, the Peltiers that use larger semiconductor pellets show a more uniform temperature across both the hot and cold surfaces. As compared to one of our competitors' Peltiers, you can see little spots where the temperature is not uniform. An application that can directly benefit from CUI device's Arctec structure is a PCR thermal cycler machine. This would fall into the scientific research industry, and it is extremely important to medical research in finding causes and cures of infectious disease. What the PCR machine does is it makes copies of specific DNA samples through the process of thermal cycling, which we all know is bringing starting temperature down to target temperature. This allows scientists to amplify one small DNA sample into a large enough amount to study it in detail. Peltiers allow for a large temperature range and very high temperature stability and precision for this particular thermal cycle process, which as you can probably guess, is extremely important because in this instance, lives may just depend on it. PCR machines are a very critical part of medical research, which we may not have realized previously, but now we do. Up to now, we've talked mainly about the inner workings of a Peltier applications and CUI devices value add features. We're now going to get a bit more into the nitty gritty stuff like how to use and select a Peltier module, 
how to read Peltier module data sheets, and CUI Devices general product offering in terms of specs. First, let's talk about how to use a Peltier module. As mentioned previously, Peltiers really are not replacements to cooling solutions like fans or heat sinks. Rather, you'll pretty much always see Peltiers used in conjunction with heat sinks, and you'll often see them used with both fans and heat sinks. The heat sink is required because of the heat on the hot side of the Peltier. If it doesn't have anywhere to go, the Peltier will end up just heating both sides instead of cooling one side. A fan may be helpful and or needed to blow air across the heat sink to help dissipate the heat faster. It is also good practice to have some type of thermal interface material, whether that be thermal pad or grease, to make the bond between the Peltier and the heat sink nice and clean. For reference, we also sell thermal interface materials that can be used with our Peltiers. We have a standard line of thermal pads that are designed specifically to fit with our Peltiers. And then lastly, Outside of the CUI device's product realm, engineers may want to incorporate a thermal sensor in their design to monitor the temperature of the object being cooled. And of course, a power supply is going to be needed to actually power up the Peltier module. Now for our third application example. The industry here is the consumer market and the application is a security camera. The Peltiers here are used to cool the image sensors in the camera to minimize visual noise caused by electromagnetic interference. What this does is really sharpen up the image portrayed on the monitor or the screen. You'll see this type of thing in security cameras for homes, retail stores, banks, manufacturing facilities, etc. Whether you're new to Peltier modules or relatively familiar with them, there are a few things that are important to keep in mind. Big takeaways from this slide are that Peltiers transfer heat. They do not absorb heat. They cool on one side and they heat on the other meaning that the heat needs to be dissipated off of the hot side. The power used to operate the Peltier module must also be dissipated, otherwise known as the power supply. In some instances, you might want to heat something, which can be done by just reversing the direction of the current flow to the Peltier. Or you might even want to generate electricity by harvesting heat from some other component in your system. This is practical for very low power levels, but not something we'll go over today as it's not really a, the main use or application for our Peltier products. As always, and potentially even more so for Peltiers, the CUI Devices technical support team is happy to assist you if you are working on a Peltier project. It takes time and education is key to understanding these products. Now on to some of the more boring but necessary stuff, the data sheets. There are five key parameters that are good to know when it comes to Peltiers. The first is the Q, and what this is, is the heat load transfer. This is always measured in watts. So if you receive an inquiry where the heat load transferred is measured in Celsius, it needs to be transferred to watts. Then we have the delta T, which is the temperature difference between the hot and the cold side of the Peltier module. Engineers should consider heat sinks or fans and operating conditions of the system when determining what delta T is needed. Of course, we have the size, which is the physical size of the Peltier module. This dictates what type of module you can fit into your application. Lastly, we have the IMAX, which is the maximum input current to the Peltier module. And we have the VMAX, which is the maximum input voltage that the Peltier can handle. One note regarding the IMAX and the VMAX specs is that these are not like a DC fan's voltage and current ratings. You typically do not drive the Peltier at these maximum ratings. Rather, the Peltier should be driven at any rating up to the specified IMAX or VMAX. And in general, you actually don't want to run the Peltier at the IMAX and VMAX ratings. If you operate them at the maximum ratings, your delta T will be zero and you won't achieve any cooling. In general, a good rule of thumb is to actually operate at about 70% or less of the IMAX and VMAX ratings, which I'll explain more in the coming slides. Now let's learn how to determine which Peltier module will, will work for an application by using the performance graphs. This is really the only way to determine if a Peltier module will work for a customer, so it's really critical to understand how to read these graphs properly. Before we can read these graphs, customers must always provide the following criteria. Heat transfer in watts, or the Q, the temperature difference between the hot and the cold side of the module, or the delta T, 
And ideally, they'd also be able to provide the temperature that they'd expect on the hot side of the module, because performance graphs are measured at two temperatures, 27 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. So the conditions we're looking at today are a heat transfer of 20 watts with a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius and a hot side temperature of 30 C. The first step is to look for the 20 watts on the heat pumped axis of the graph. Next, you'll find the 20 on the delta T section of the graph. Next is to find the point where these two lines would intersect if you were drawing straight lines from those two points. They meet at point three shown on the graph. What this does is it gives you the current needed to drive into the Peltier. It looks like it is about 2.5 amps. Next, you draw a straight line into the upper area of the graph until you intersect that exact same current rating, in this case, 2.5 amps. Lastly, you draw a line left towards the import, input voltage area of the graph, and this will give you your input voltage. In this case, we have about eight volts. So when looking at this Peltier, a customer would need to drive it at eight volts two and a half amps to achieve a heat transfer of 20 watts with a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius and a hot side temp of 30 degrees Celsius. Now let's take a look at doing this in real time using a CUI devices data sheet. Here we have the performance graph for our CP85134H, which is a 15 by 15 by four millimeter module with an IMAX rating of eight and a half amps and a VMAX rating of 2.1 volts. Let's say an engineer comes to you needing to pump around five watts of heat with a delta T of 25 degrees Celsius, and they expect the hot side of the module to sit around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. So for this, we'll use our hot side TH equals 27 degrees Celsius graph. The first step is to find five watts on the heat pumped axis. Step two is to find 25 degrees Celsius on the delta T axis. Step three, Draw a line from each of these points to where they intersect. It looks like they intersect just over the 5.1 amp current line. We'll call it 5.5 amps. Step four, draw a line up from that point to where it intersects 5.5 amps on the upper portion of the graph. The last step, draw a line left to where it meets the input voltage axis of the graph. Looks like it hits this axis at about 1.4 volts. So, for this engineer to pump five watts with a delta T of 25 degrees Celsius, they would need to drive this module at about 1.4 volts, 5.5 amps. This seems within the Peltier's performance range as it is well under the IMAX ratings of 2.1 volts and eight and a half amps. However, if the engineer wanted to pump eight watts under these same conditions, it would not be possible. Now that we've gone through the specs of Peltier modules, let's take a look at CUI Devices' actual product offering. Here's a quick snapshot of our Peltier product offering. We have quite a wide range of available products. Single stage modules are the most common type of Peltier, consisting of the semiconductor pellets and ceramic plates. Some of our single stage Peltier modules are extremely micro, down to just a few millimeters, to accommodate more space constrained designs. We also have multi-stage modules, which are essentially two or more Peltiers stacked on top of each other. This allows for a greater temperature differential between the hot and cold sides, otherwise known as the delta T, because one Peltier is cooling the hot side of the first Peltier. Lastly, we have cooling units, which provide larger cooling performances because of the attached radiator. They also come with mounting holes for easy installation into systems. In general, single stage modules will be less expensive than their equivalent multi-stage or cooling unit counterparts. However, there is an extremely broad range in terms of price in all three of these buckets due to the wide performance range of the product line. I'd like to quickly point out that we do offer a range of Peltier module customizations and modifications. In general, there are three types of customizations that we see. The first would be wire assembly. This means modifying the wires on the Peltier, adjusting the length, gauge, color, adding connectors to the end of the wires for easy installation on the customer end. Next, where things get a little more customized would be the shape or the size of the Peltier. 
We can build single stage modules in square sizes up to 62 by 62 millimeters, rectangular sizes up to 89 millimeters on the length side, and round sizes up to 50 millimeters in diameter. We can also link multiple Peltier modules together via wire. Lastly, we can also support full thermal assembly customizations. CUI Devices also sells DC fans and heat sinks, as well as thermal pads that are designed to be used specifically with our Peltiers. So we can support full assemblies using all of these products. All right, now for our last application example. This will fall into the telecom industry. The application here is an optical transceiver. An optical transceiver is a device that converts electrical signals into light signals, which allows high data transmission at very far distances. This is a critical piece of 5G technology and allows the platform to operate at the rate that it does. Peltiers can be used to control the temperature of the laser diodes in optical transceivers. 5G telecom standards require that these diodes be kept below 70 degrees Celsius. The small form factor of optical transceivers partnered with the limited opportunity for forced air cooling present a perfect opportunity for Peltiers. Where you might see optical transceivers that is relatable, fiber optic network cabling for most commercial and residential internet services. Let's take a look at some of the additional resources for our Peltier product line. As with all CUI devices products, we offer a library of ready-made 3D models for our Peltiers to help streamline the design process, saving engineers time and resources. Users are able to view and download 3D models in all major mechanical CAD formats free of charge. We also have a number of thermal calculators on our website. We have an airflow conversion calculator, a thermal conversion calculator, and a heat sink calculator. Like all CUI devices products, we have an advanced parametric search tool for our Peltier devices that can help you quickly find and compare different Peltier devices based on key specification criteria. CUI devices product pages are also stacked full with piles of resources. You can see things like our distributor stock check. You can check our 3D and PCB models. You can request a quote, request a sample, view our Rojas compliance, and of course, look at our data sheets. Lastly, when it comes to resources, we have a very big amount of online material to help assist customers in everything from understanding the product to implementing the product into their application. Some of the key resources I'd like to highlight in terms of Peltiers are our How to Design a Peltier Module System blog post, which helps customers with design considerations when looking at Peltiers. I'd also like to highlight our Architect Structure app note. This is a major help to selling our product line. As mentioned earlier on in this slide deck, Arctec is truly a huge value add for CUI devices, and the information in the app note speaks for itself. We also have a helpful video on how to select a Peltier module, which can be a great helper for customers that are trying to figure out understanding Peltiers. We've covered a lot of material today, some of which I'm sure has gone in one ear and out the other. That said, in summary, here are some of the key takeaways. Peltiers are unique cooling solutions. They offer a level of cooling that you can't get elsewhere. And because of this, applications either require them or they don't. Peltiers are not replacements to heat sinks or fans. If an engineer is getting away with using a heat sink right now and is only looking for something like a cost down, they should not consider a Peltier. Rather, Peltiers are always used in conjunction with some type of heat sink and often with fans as well. Peltiers can cool below ambient, offer precise temp control and spot cooling, and offer quick and immediate cooling. CUI device's major value add is the Arctec structure, which is a thermally conductive resin layer that absorbs the thermal expansion and contraction caused by thermal cycling, reducing impact on semiconductor pellets and resulting in longer lifetime. We carry a broad range of Peltiers, including single stage modules, multi-stage modules, and cooling units. Customizations and modified standard products are no issue for CUI devices. Applications are broad, servicing industries including consumer, medical, scientific, industrial, and more. And lastly, CUI devices website is your best friend to find good information on Peltiers, what they are, and how to use them. Of course, 
the CUI Devices team is always here to help as well. Thank you very much for joining us today. Again, my name is Rex Halleck. I'm the Senior Product Manager at CUI Devices, and I hope you learned a little something about Peltiase.